We have been waiting a long time for this one. It's finally time to have a look at the Google Nest Hello video doorbell. Hi and welcome to Team Burgundy. My name's Carl and this is our look at the Nest Hello video doorbell. Today we're going to be looking at what's in the box, taking you through installation and setup, a look at some of the features and functions that you get, and then our final thoughts after about a month of use. So in this video, we're gonna be installing the doorbell at our home, which threw up a couple of interesting challenges and you may have one or both of these same issues. Number one is we wanted to replace a battery operated doorbell and chime that had absolutely zero pre-existing cabling, chime, or anything else. And two, we wanted to use the doorbell to make announcements to our existing Sonos speaker setup. Now before we go any further, please just keep in mind that all the tech in our videos is all purchased ourselves. We've got no sponsorships, as you can probably tell, and it's all our own opinions. If you find this video useful, please remember to hit the like button, and if you want to check out our other videos, and we'd really appreciate you clicking subscribe. Okay, so what do you get in a box? Well, you obviously get the doorbell itself, and the fit and the finish appear to be excellent, which is good, is what I was expecting and the design and the materials all fit nicely with the rest of the Nest product line. The doorbell has got a nice weight to it, it doesn't feel cheap or plasticky, and that's one of the main things that drew me to the Nest hardware a few years ago, as it seems to really complement Apple's products, which I'm a big fan of. But unfortunately for us, Google purchased Nest, which is forcing me to try and get Apple and Google to play nicely. Now excuse me for a minute, will I just imagine a world where Apple bought Nest instead? <sighs> okay. Also in the box are some instructions, which as usual are of no use. So I'd say just fire up the Nest app, which will take you through the order that you need to do things in. A CCTV sticker to show all the pesky criminals that they're being watched. The chime adapter, which you will use if you plan to replace an existing wired doorbell, but I have no use for that. A dinky box of tools, which includes a very sweet little drill bit, screws, and some raw plugs. Some chime extender cables and an ejector tool that you can use to remove the doorbell unit from the wall bracket if you need to. Speaking of which, here is the wall bracket. And lastly, the wedge, as Nest likes to call it, which lets you angle the doorbell at 15 degrees in either direction if you don't like the look of the doorbell being flush, or more likely because you need to change the angle to get a better view of what's happening outside. So that's everything you get in the box. Now I mentioned that we had no pre-existing wiring and that's the main reason it's taken me at least a year to actually buy the Nest doorbell. Because at first there were no pre-made options available to get power to the device. And a lot of the first generation guides that I did find online sounded way beyond my electrical abilities. You needed to fit a chime box, run the bell wires on their own circuit and it all just put me off. So fast forward about 18 months and now you can buy things like this adapter online. I was skeptical, but read enough reviews to feel like I wanted to see for myself. I'm happy to report that so far it's been absolutely flawless. The doorbell has been installed for a couple of months, and the two things that worried me from reviews were the adapter apparently gets hot and produces a loud buzz. Now I can definitely say that I've had neither of those issues with this particular unit. I'll leave a link in the description for the one that we've used here. Now moving on to installation, the first job is to gently and gracefully remove the old doorbell. Next, just mark where you want your new doorbell to sit. You need to give some thought to what you want the doorbell to be able to see. If you've got awkward shaped porchways or walls blocking your view, you may need to use the wedge to make the most of the wide angled lens. And it is recommended that you add the device to your Nest setup before fixing it in place so that you can use the app to get a feel for exactly where it should sit. Don't forget to feed your cables through the back of the faceplate before tightening the screws down. And then with that done, you just need to connect each cable to the terminals on the back of the doorbell and click it into place. It really is that easy. I should say this is only a temporary wiring job and I know I need to go back and do a bit of tidying up, but this whole installation took about 30 minutes. So moving on to software setup, we already have a number of Nest products, so this video will show me adding the doorbell. If you'd like to see a more in-depth video of setting up a Nest account for the first time, then let me know in the comments below. I have shortened the sequence by a few minutes here and removed the scanning of the QR code, but should hope to give you an idea of what you can expect. As you can see, and like I mentioned during the unboxing, the Nest app will attempt to take you through all the installation steps, assuming you're doing a complete doorbell replacement, and does make a pretty decent job of it. Of course, another option, if you don't feel confident in attempting this installation yourself, is to pay what Nest call a Nest Pro to complete the work for you. These are professionals that have completed some sort of Nest training to ensure that the product is installed properly. 
Now I did use a Nest Pro when we had our thermostat installed a couple of years ago. They did an okay job, but I was told that the thermostat couldn't control our hot water. Then when we had our boiler replaced about a year later, a different company that did that work said that it should be possible. So I guess like with any project, you need to be careful with who you get to do the work. And for this video, I've just had to click next a whole bunch of times. So that is the app finished now, taking us through installation and initial power on. And because I already have other Nest products connected to our Wi-Fi, the setup asks me to wake up another device, in this case, a Nest smoke detector. And once that's awake, the doorbell picks up all the Wi-Fi settings, SSID and password without me having to enter anything manually, which is really slick. The last couple of options allow you to fine tune the delay if you do have a physical chime and also to change the language of the baked in responses that you can send to people at the front door. Next up, we're going to switch over to the Sonos app and set up our Sonos One speaker to receive the visitor announcements. Again, I've shortened this process and removed any email addresses. So when you come to do yours, you'll just need your Sonos login details to hand. Now these days, there are quite a few options available for devices that you can use as the announcement speaker. The most recent Sonos speakers all have support for the Google and Amazon assistants. Or you could use something as simple and as cheap as the Google Home Mini. Now looking forward, we've just put an order in for the HomePod Mini, which should be here in the next couple of weeks. Now it wouldn't natively allow you to make visitor announcements, but Mrs. Burgundy also got me the Starling Home Hub for Christmas, which I'm hoping will make my Nest and Apple environment become even more seamless. Make sure you're subscribed to see those videos as soon as they're released. So we're almost done here then. I just wanted to show the privacy setting from Google as they've always been somewhat lacking in terms of accessing your recordings and videos, so this is nice to see. And there you go, that should be all you need. We currently have the festive theme switched on, so this is what we get every time we get a visitor. Someone's at front door. There are a lot of things that the Nest Hello can do, and there's no way I can cover them all here, so I thought I'd mention some of our favourites so far. The iOS home screen notifications are great, and let you check what has triggered without having to go all the way into the app with just a long press. Of course, if you want to go into the app, then you get a lot more detail, and it's all relatively quick. Notifications can get out of control quickly though, so it's great that you can disable different types of alerts that you may not want to know about. Sounds is a particularly good one to disable, for example. As part of this installation, we migrated to the new Nest Aware plan. This does work out cheaper for multiple camera setups, but you lose the ability to scrub through 24-7 recording unless you jump to the top tier, which then works out about the same as the old price per camera model, which is a bit of a shame. You're left scrolling through a timeline of alerts, which I guess does make it quicker to find actual things happening instead of hours of leaves flying across the lawn. And Nest Aware is clever enough to do facial recognition, so it's also worth taking the time to tell the system who each face is after, say, a week's worth of visitors. This is very difficult to show for privacy reasons, but once you've got it set up, your announcement speaker will say the name of the person rather than just a generic message. Video quality is really excellent during both day and night, and speaker quality on either side of the conversation is really good too. The pre-baked responses to visitors are actually quite handy. For instance, if you're in a meeting at work and you really need to tell the delivery driver that they can just leave that parcel, or if you just politely need to let the in-laws know that not today. So to sum up, the Nest Hello has allowed us to achieve all the goals we had at the start. It's integrated nicely with our Sonos and Apple world and finally given us a working doorbell and second point of view for video security for our home. We highly recommend everything seen in the video. Yes, the Nest Aware subscription can feel like a step backwards for a two camera setup, but as you expand, it becomes much better value and some of the bells and whistles like package detection, which I couldn't show in this video, really start to make up for it. And if you've stuck around this long, then a sincere thank you from Mrs. Burgundy and myself. Remember to check out our other videos, our Instagram, and click that subscribe bell to stay notified for all of our upcoming projects.